Am I the Aho for accepting my parents' old house despite my father and stepmother's history there? Background. In my country, it's still fairly common, especially in the rural areas, that parents either outright give or at least significantly help all but one of their children with their own house. The one child who is not given help with the, with the house inherits the original parental house and any other parental estate. It is also expected of that child to take care of the elderly parents too. My mom was one who got the new house. My aunt is the one staying with the grandparents. My father moved to our village upon marrying my mom. His parents gave him a car and covered with a significant portion of appliances for the new home. But the construction of the building and the land itself was from my maternal side. My mom died when I was 12. My father pretty much checked out of the marriage shortly after her diagnosis and began seeing future stepmother. He moved her into the house about two months after the funeral and married her four months later. He said it was to give me a mother figure, which is bullshit. I was young, not stupid. I could see her pretty much gave up on my mom and my mom knew it too. I turned out to my aunt as my mother figure when it came to things like periods, brass, sex, etc. I wasn't outright rude to the stepmother but I made it clear that I wasn't going to come to her with those things. As I mentioned above, we live in the village. There was a lot of side eyeing of my father's action and it was clear that both my father and stepmother were viewed as trashy for their actions. No one was outright rude to them but they were treated as strangers. Not members of the community. It eventually got to them when they sold the house and moved away. They didn't know at the time that the house was bought by a friend of my aunt who immediately sold it to my aunt in turn. She kept the house with the intention to give it to me eventually. I accepted, of course. It's my childhood home, still in good condition. I have roots in the area and a lined up job with a reasonable commute. I didn't see any downsides. My father said my acceptance is a slap in the face considering he and his wife were run out of the house 10 years ago. That I can expect them to regularly visit the site of their humiliation. That if I want a house. I should have asked him first that a good daughter would think about her parents would feel. Whatever his failings as a husband, he was a decent father to me and maybe I should have thought about the fact that his memories of the house are worse than mine. I could always sell it again and buy it another one with no emotional baggage. My aunt wouldn't mind. So am I the a-hole for accepting and possibly keeping the house? NTA Considering he and his wife were run out of the house, that is a lie, they are not honest. They sold it. That if I wanted a house, I should have asked him first. Tell him, he buys you a second house and pays for it, you will consider not living in the house you already have. Smile. Anyway, keep the house. He does not need to visit, if he does not like it. NTA. They wouldn't have sold it if the neighbors ever included them so I can sort of see how the constant feeling of being left out could have made them feel unwanted. And in the interest of being fair, he offered to help me get another house, it's just I always miss the area and it just seems more practical to keep the house. But I know I have a tendency to consider the practical side of the matter above the emotional side, which can lend itself to all behavior, even if unintentional, so that's why I'm here. Most of the neighbors are related to my maternal family to a certain degree. I often joke that I'm related to half of the village by blood and the other half by marriage. The things they did were mostly things like not inviting them to cookouts, not accepting their invitations to cookouts, only making the most necessary of small talk if they ran into them in a store or at a village festival and so on. The neighbors would help in an emergency but they denied their friendships. And a teenage me felt they deserved it. In hindsight, if I tried to get my father and stepmother included, it probably would have happened. But because I made it clear to friends and classmates that I liked them being socially ostracized, the public opinion rallied behind me. The guilt over that is one of the reasons I'm unsure about my decision. I actually think it's kinda cool that this community rallied around you. They were fond of your mom and your dad treated her poorly. No one did anything to them. People simply chose not to hang out with them. It's a consequence of their actions. NTA yeah I was thinking about that, like how the aunt's friend bought the house plus then sold to aunt so it could stay in the family slash be a gift for op. Yeah, to be perfectly honest, this sounds like exactly the kind of community anyone would be lucky to live in. 
they take care of their own and look out for others. I would be very happy if my community took sure good care of my child if something were to ever happen to me. That your father actually gets angry about that shows that he is only thinking of himself and not what's in your best interests, Up. Why are you taking emotional responsibility for the communities? Totally normal, response to avoid personal friendships with people they find unsavory. Likewise it your fault, that your dad and stepmother faced consequences for their decisions? When you cheat on someone, there is fallout. In this case, it's the whole community. In some cases, it might be a friend group or a workplace or family. Everything we do has consequences, and this one is exactly what you should expect. If you cheat on your dying wife, in her family's village surrounded by relatives and relations, you cannot expect a warm welcome afterwards. Why is your mother's family obligated to be friends with the man who cheated on her while she was sick? Because if I said I wanted them more included, it would have happened. Not everyone but it wouldn't have been a total ostracization. They weren't invited to the cookouts but I was, usually through the child of the family that was either my friend, classmate or cousin of some sort. If I asked if my father and stepmother could come, too, they would have been invited on my behalf. I never asked. I also never asked for any of my parties, birthdays, confirmation, HS acceptance, to be held at their house but rather at my grandparents. Again, if I asked, people would have come, not gladly, not happily, but they would have done it for me. And that forced interaction might have eventually turned into a sort of acceptance. Not by everyone, but there were neighbors who weren't as close to the whole thing and who only followed the majority example. Reading all the responses I realized my post was mostly motivated by a certain trait of my personality taking over. I need to make things fair. I actually had therapy for the issue because I was letting certain opportunities slide by because I didn't feel I earned them fairly. I'm going to set up an appointment on Monday to refresh myself on why I don't need to be the one to make things fair for everyone.